Hello, how, how's everybody doing? Uh, hopefully your hackathon experience is going well so far. I've seen a lot of really amazing workshops. Uh, I've been chatting with a couple of people who've been hacking and honestly, I'm so excited to see where everybody is. Um, cool, so today I thought I'd uh, show uh, something a little bit different, which is my experience, my own personal experience uh, working on some generative NFT projects. And um, th my whole inspiration or motivation for this talk is to show you an overall architecture for how these projects have been built in the past from what I've seen. And uh, that way it can maybe give you some inspiration for working on one of these projects if that's kind of the direction that you're exploring. So um, quick intro, hi everyone, I'm Albert. Uh, I'm currently a developer advocate at Alchemy. Uh, we are a blockchain developer platform. We exist to help you uh, deploy your projects really smoothly and be able to monitor them, uh, alert on transactions, and we just give you a whole bunch of APIs that are super awesome and easy to use. Um, but I'll show you more later on, like how we actually connect into your NFT development journey. Um, and just to give you some background, I'm currently building two NFT projects. One is called Chibi Shinobis. Uh, the other is called Crypto Cool Bombs. And uh, one is, uh, Chibi Shinobis is actually on Solana, but when I was initially building it, it was on Ethereum. So it's actually the project that I'm gonna be talking about a little bit later today. Um, and then previously I've been, I've worked as a full stack engineer in the web two world. Um, so I'm super excited to be part of the web three world today. And uh, right here, this is my avatar that I'm using across all my socials now. It's actually my one of one Chibi Shinobi. I'm super proud of it. Um, yeah, thanks to the team who, who, who made it. Um, I, I love it a lot. So that's kind of who I am. Awesome, let's move on. So uh, for Chibi Shinobis, let's get into it. Um, first, this is the team. I didn't make this project by myself. I heavily worked on, I've, I've worked most heavily on the coding side. Uh, so, you know, the uh, Ethereum Solidity smart contract code, and standing up some of the website. Uh, Matt actually helped a lot, and towards the end, we're actually converting to Solana, so he's actually doing all the work porting to Solana. Um, but he's also an artist. Catherine was also an artist. Valerie also helped with the art. They actually worked on different layers that I'll talk about later. later. Um, but Valerie also helped a lot with our Discord community, and that's something that I won't dive in too much more on this presentation, but just know that that actually is a huge part of the success of an NFT project. So that's the team, the four of us. We've been having a lot of fun working on this. Uh, here's a preview of the art. So uh, you can see things like uh, facial expression, a different headband, depending on like which clan you're in. Um, and Chibi Shinobis, for people who don't know, it's basically, it's Japanese for cute ninjas. And this was really inspired by a lot of the animes that we love to discuss in our community. And uh, you know, it's open to, to anyone, even if you don't watch anime really, but we just thought it would be a really fun way to kind of express a part of who we are. Um, and so you have different hairstyles, you have different clothing, you even have this like Lakers basketball shorts, which is, you know, pretty fun. And then you have like one with a big accessory. So, uh, yeah, the artist had a ton of fun just coming up with these, these images and making them uh, relatable and fun to work with the architecture. So this is the key thing here. The architecture is, uh, how I actually built the project. So you can see the project layout. There's, I roughly split it into two components. So there is the back end portion uh, that involves the actual Solidity smart contract, but it also involves um, off chain data storage for the images and then also a metadata server, um, which, and th these parts are not like definitively needed for every person's NFT project. And I'll go over other ways that you can structure your NFT project, but this is how we did it. So we had a back end portion and we had a front end portion. The front end portion uh, is kind of how users interact with our smart contract um, and mint new pieces and buy and sell and all this other stuff. So let's go into each single part uh, real quick. Awesome, so for the image generation script, I'm just gonna let you watch the GIF here on the left for a while because it's kind of interesting. This is actually one of our artists working on the head portion. So you can see different hairstyles being drawn. You can see different headbands being tried on. You can see different facial expressions. And what I'm trying to show you here is that there's a lot of work that went into actually creating these intricate designs for the layers of the image. And the reason we needed layers is so that we could feed it into this image generation script. And the function right here, it's actually uh, written in Python. Uh, it's pretty easy to understand. This is the high level structure of it. I didn't show the actual code we used, but uh, you can see we create, it's called, the function is called create a new image. And this new image is basically a dictionary that holds the names of the different layers. And then we grab uh, a layer from the background array with background weights. So it's like randomly you know, weighted. And then we grab one from a circle and we grab one from a square. And then that is saved in this new image dictionary. And then later on in our script, we use that dictionary to then combine the layers 
and, and form one image. So uh, I have a link here to the script that inspired our script. And it's awesome that they were able to share this, this code. I believe it was like the board bananas project that, that uh, initially shared it. So if you want to uh, use that and see like what it's like, then you can click on that link. And uh, this, this is recorded, so you can watch this again later to, to find the links. But yeah, so we use that image generation script to like create all our um, all 8,000 of our pieces. Now the next component is once, once I had generated all of the images based on our artist's layers, um, they're kind of too big to store on chain, on the Ethereum blockchain. Um, so we had to do what's called off-chain storage and I used IPFS. IPFS is a protocol that um, is meant for decentralized storage. So it's like more in line with the decentralization ethos than something like AWS S3 for storing, storing images. Um, and uh, so yeah, in order to gain access to the IPFS protocol, I used something called Pinata. And what they do is they help you pin assets. Pinning just means like, it's almost like pinning an image on a dartboard or you know on a, on a whiteboard, making sure that that image stays there. If no one pins it, then eventually the IPFS protocol will actually clean up the image uh, because nobody wants to store it. So you have to be at least one of the people on the decentralized network that is willing to store it. And Pinata is the tool that helps you do that. So I used Pinata um, and during testing, especially I was able to just use their free account. So didn't have to pay anything out of pocket. Um, they, they help you pin up to one gigabytes worth of assets for free. Uh, so that's super nice. And you can see, it's a little hard to see in the image here, but there's a, what's called a CID, which is content ID. And once you pin uh, an asset on IPFS, or once you upload uh, an image on IPFS, it will spit out and calculate, it will calculate and spit out a CID for your asset. And this CID is basically the unique identifier of your image or your video or whatever it is you wanna store. And that ID is ultimately what we will be linking in our smart contract so that for example, if OpenSea is asking my smart contract for the NFT, it knows where to find the image and what image to load. So you'll see here, we have in our metadata server, uh, this top function right here, app.get slash metadata slash ID. And then the ID is a parameter that comes in. If I ask for metadata for ID one or metadata for ID 8,000, whatever it is, it will look up in my metadata object, the metadata for my image. And so I create this metadata as I'm creating the images so that I can load it in this metadata server. And you might ask, okay, who's querying this server? That's where uh, this smart contract comes in. The smart contract doesn't query the metadata server, but it does have a URI that says, hey, for anyone who's querying me, who, who is asking me for the details of this NFT, you should go look here for the metadata. And so uh, you can see here, that when I deploy the contract, um, this highlighted line here, it's a little small, but when, when I deploy the contract, I feed in a base URI. And this base URI is the URI of my metadata server that's live. So what the contract does with that base URI is when uh, you know me on the front end is querying the smart contract on the back end, and I'm saying, hey, uh, this user owns NFT with IDs one, two, and three, can you show me the, those images and show me the, the attributes and everything like that? Uh, then the smart contract will say, sure, I got you. I know that I just need to return to you the base URI plus the token ID, and that's the URL where I can query that metadata. And so uh, it'll return you know, what you see here. Um, it, it'll query the metadata server and the metadata server will return a JSON blob that looks like this, that has the, uh, all the metadata for our NFTs. And then some other things we had in our smart contract is uh, the founders, they get first mint. So uh, in the constructor, when we deploy the smart contract, we made sure that four mints uh, immediately happen uh, so that the four founders get the first four Chibishinomis. And then we just do some manually, uh, some manual uploadings to make sure that uh, IDs zero, one, two, three, those four, first four NFTs, those are our special one of one um, Chibishinobis. And then we also implemented some other special stuff that doesn't exist in the ERC-721 standard. So we have, for example, the allow list functionality uh, that makes sure that during the minting process, we have a period of time where people who we have approved um, ahead of time can mint first. So that way it's, it ensures that we don't have bots who are attacking and things like that. Um, cool. And then the metadata URL part, I already talked about that. 
So, um, and then finally the deploying and metrics and logging on the backend side. This uh, is where Alchemy finally really came in. And I was working on this project before I even started working at Alchemy, but I found that Alchemy is so good at providing a seamless experience for deploying my smart contract and then also monitoring the project. So you can see right here, this is my dashboard for Chibi Shinobi's um, in my testnet, Ringby testnet environment. And we have you know 65 requests that came in because I was deploying and testing and all of them were successful. But if they weren't successful, I have a way to actually find out like why were they not successful? Did I not have enough gas? What, what happened? And so in the back here with uh, recent requests, you can see recent invalid requests. That's a tab that we can search through. So this was super useful for me to figure out like and learn what exactly is going on when I deploy my contract to a blockchain and when my front end website is interacting with the smart contract. So uh, on the front end side, we have the website landing page. This is the first thing you'll see if you go to chibishinobis.com. Um, and we have this nice little uh, GIF on the homepage that cycles through some of the different traits that you can get. And we talk about, you know, what's the ethos of Chibi Shinobis. You know, we are, um, this is funny because we're, we're on the Solana blockchain now. So the homepage says Solana. Um, but uh, this, uh, we, we, we talk about how many pieces we have in our collection, how much each one costs. Every Chibi Shinobi is unique and has its own personality. Uh, some look like OP shinobi gods, some look like hype beasts, but then all of them pay homage to our favorite animes, mangas, and pop culture. So uh, it was one, it was really awesome. We actually did some math uh, to see like all the different permutations that were possible for our collection. And based on the traits, the number of traits that we have for hair, the number of traits that we have for headband, the number of traits that we have for facial expression, and so on, we actually had 1.8 quadrillion possible options, which is amazing. Um, and, uh, so that tells us that like by generating only 8,000 of them, even if we run the generation script more than once, there's actually uh, a very small chance that we will generate the same one twice, which was kind of mind blowing. So anyways, um, that's our website landing page. And then the minter page is a key one. This is where people will mint. Um, and we actually haven't sold yet. We're, we're launching soon. That's another story, but just to show you what's going on here. On the front end, you have this mint button that's actually connected to uh, Web3.js or Ether J Ethers JS, some kind of SDK that allows you to query the smart contract. And when it queries the smart contract, it'll call one of these two functions. Uh, I've implemented one called hire one shinobi and another one called hire three shinobis. So these are basically our mint functions that help the new user like create a new NFT. So hire one is exactly what it sounds like. It mints one NFT. And then hire three mints three, and it gives the user a little bit of a discount to incentivize like buying in bulk. Um, and then we have in Solidity, this modifier, two modifiers. One is uh, called payable, which makes sure that the function can receive money. And the other one is when public sales started. So that's one that I implemented myself, where it makes sure that people cannot mint unless I've explicitly flipped the switch to start the sale. And then uh, we do some checks in here, uh, require that only 8,888 will ever exist. So if the total supply is already at that amount, then we're not gonna allow people to mint anymore, obviously. And then the other check we do is whether or not the person uh, who's sending the money to mint a Chibi Shinobi has sent enough money. So if it's not at the price level that we need, then we're gonna reject this transaction. Otherwise, we just call the safe mint function. And this is another benefit of using the ERC721 standard. There are great implementations out there that have already implemented the minting functionality. So I just called that and then that's pretty much uh, the mint function. So when you're clicking the mint function, when you're cl clicking the mint button on the, on the website, uh, it calls that SDK and then it hits that mint function. And that's, that's how you create a Chibi Shinobi. Um, awesome. So I just wanted to call out that there are tons of other ways to make NFTs too. For example, I didn't go into any of the ERC-1155 examples, but there are people who are making loot boxes now where you can actually um, buy a loot box and then the loot box contains NFTs. So the loot box itself is an NFT and then there's loot that's an NFT, uh, like, you know, little gotchapon items or whatever. And then here, I just wanted to call out, uh, Patrick has an amazing video on how to make NFT art on chain. Because you'll notice that a lot of the images, the, the images that I showed you for Chibi Shinobi, they were too large to store on chain. So we had to go through IPFS and then a metadata server. And there are ways for you to draw data using uh, and be able to store on it, store it inside the Ethereum blockchain directly. So you don't have to do the IPFS. You don't have to do the metadata server. 
and you can actually store everything on chain. So he has a great video for that. And I'm actually, after watching that video, I started working on a second project and this is Crypto Cool Bombs. I made them a little bit simpler, a little bit smaller resolution so that I can store them and convert them into SVGs. Um, so I don't do the SVGs algorithmically on chain, but I do store them on chain and this video is really helpful. So a lot of different variations for how people can implement the NFTs, even if you're following the 721 standard. And then finally, this is probably the most actionable part. I know I was kind of like going fast. I was skipping through a lot of details, but if you want to uh, go through and have a guide step-by-step -step for how to get started ASAP, then we have a lot of guides. We have a lot of help on the Alchemy documentation. And I'll show you a link at the very end. Uh, this is an example of a video that steps you through how to make the NFT minter portion. So the, uh, you know, the, the front end website with a button that can allow you to mint an NFT. And so you can learn a lot of the details there for how like the, the React, the JavaScript, and the uh, Web3 or Ethers.js SDKs help you communicate with the smart contract on the blockchain. And we also have another doc that just shows you like how do you even write the smart contract. So definitely follow uh, through, through those guides if you want to, uh, if you want help. And then, so here it is. Uh, make sure that if you need any help, just uh, reach out to us. We have a lot of great features. Once you get started go on your NFT project, uh, we have a lot of great features for making sure that your, your drop is successful, your project is successful, um, if you use Alchemy to develop. So, uh, you know, talk to us on Discord, on Twitter. We have a lot of, um, we have a, a hackathon channel called Alchemy Support. So uh, myself and my colleagues will be on that channel, making sure to help you. And then we also have our docs, docs.alchemy.com. So that's where you can go to find all the information on step-by-step uh, -step how to get started. So cool. Hopefully that story was useful to everybody. And I uh, hope I can see a couple of NFT projects coming out of this, this uh, hackathon because I love seeing the different collections, the different artistic styles, the different use cases. Um, so I'm really excited. And uh, yeah, happy hacking.